Hi, I'm Dr. David Atley. In today's demonstration, we're going to be looking at apparent retrograde motion, where it comes from and how it's observable to people stuck on the Earth as opposed to with a God's eye view of the solar system. To do that, we're going to be using the Planetary Configuration Simulator from Nap Labs. Let's get started. I've got my Nap Labs open, and I'm going to start by clicking on Solar Systems Models. And then I'll come down here in the heliocentric category and I'll pick the Planetary Configurations Simulator. That pops up a window that looks like this that shows us the relative positions of two different planets and then also allows us to see how the planet looks on the sky compared to the position of the Sun and the constellations of the zodiac. Let's say our blue planet is Earth, so it's set for an orbital size of 1 AU, which is correct. And then let's say our second planet, the one that we're going to be interested in, is Mars. So Mars has a semi-major axis of about 1.5 astronomical units. So the relative size of the orbits of Mars and Earth look about like this. Let's go ahead and run the clock back. So Mars is kind of over here and then start the simulation. You'll see that because the Earth has a shorter track than Mars, and because it travels faster along its orbit, as we'll learn when we study Kepler's laws, the Earth is going to periodically catch up to and pass Mars. And when it does that, Mars is going to undergo kind of a strange behavior if we watch it along this strip here. So you'll see that normally Mars is moving from west to east night to night. But as the Earth catches up to and passes it, Mars appears to go backwards. Did you catch that? Well, if not, let's pause and back up time. So we'll go back and let the Earth pass Mars again. As the Earth is passing Mars, Mars is going to pause, go backwards, and then go forwards again. This is the behavior that we call apparent retrograde motion. You'll notice that whenever the Earth is passing Mars, and Mars looks like it's going backwards on the sky, like right here, Mars does not actually change its motion in its orbit. That's why we call this apparent retrograde motion. Mars isn't actually going backwards, it just looks like it is. This is an optical illusion caused by the fact that we observers are stuck on the Earth, which is a moving planet buried within the solar system. This works for Mars. Okay, here it comes again. It's going backwards and then going forwards again. But it also works for lots of other planets. It's going to work for Venus or Mercury or Saturn or Neptune. Any planet that you set with the appropriate orbit will undergo this very behavior. And if you think about it, the requirement that Earth laps or is lapped by one of these planets during apparent retrograde motion is going to explain a lot of the important observed features of planets when they are in retrograde. So we have those two primary observed features of planets in retrograde. They're really bright, and for most of them, planets like Mars and Saturn, they're opposite the Sun on the sky. So here, where the Earth is passing Mars and Mars is in retrograde, why would Mars look particularly bright at this time? Think about that. Try and figure out an answer. And then if you look, you'll see that for somebody on the Earth, Mars is over here and the Sun is over there. So Mars and the Sun are indeed opposite one another on the sky. The Sun is highest in the sky around noon, and then Mars is highest in the sky around midnight, 12 hours later. This will be true for any planet that is farther from the Sun than the Earth is. Mercury and Venus are weird because they're uh, closer to the Sun than we are, and so their orbits get a little bit odd. Um, they have special rules for how they move on the sky. But the other planets, Mars through Neptune, all behave in this way. So play around with this simulator. See what Venus does. See what Saturn does with different settings for those orbits of planets explore when retrograde motion happens, and convince yourself that it really does happen for all of the planets 
when one planet, the one closer to the sun, laps another planet, the one farther from the sun. Have fun, and I'll see you in class.